They just keep on coming. Our next speaker is homegrown, internal, and just a wonderful individual all over. Junius Williams is a noted attorney, educator, musician, and community advocate, and is, who is currently director of the Abbott Leadership Institute at Rutgers University, Newark where he teaches advocacy skills to parents, students, and professional educators. While he was a student at Amherst College in 1965, Mr. Williams went to work for the right of black people to vote in Montgomery, Alabama, and ended up working with SNCC. Upon graduating from Amherst, he then came to Newark, and he, in which he then started organizing. One organization that he organized for was the Community Engagement in the city's urban renewal plans called the Newark Area Planning Association, or NAPA. As director of NAPA, he was co-chairman of the negotiation team that produced more than 1,000 units of housing, construction job training, jobs and union membership for hundreds of black and Latino workers as part of the agreement that brought the former UMDNJ to the city. That is no small feat. What is particularly important to note is that during this medical school struggle, Mr. Williams commuted to law school at Yale University. So think about being here and commuting back and forth while really advocating for the benefit of the people. In 1978, he became the youngest person elected of the National Bar Association, where he led efforts in support of affirmative action in the wake of the Baki case, and presented a paper in support of independence for the nation of Zimbabwe at the United Nations. Mr. Williams' political memoir, Unfinished Agenda, Urban Politics in the Era of Black Power has been recently published. It is outside for purchase, something you must and absolutely should read. Please welcome Mr. Junius Williams. Good afternoon. And thank you for staying. Mine is the unenviable task of speaking at the end of a perfect day when it's snowy outside, when our minds are saturated with all the possibilities based upon the collective visions that we've heard here today. And so when faced with those kinds of compelling objective conditions, what's a man to do? <laughs> so I think I'll sing. <laughs> Paul and Silas bound in jail. Got no money for to go that bail. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on, hold on. Only thing we done was wrong. Uh, let injustice last so long. Uh, keep uh, your eyes on the prize. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, keep uh, your eyes on the prize. Hold on, hold on. Only thing we done was right was to stand up and begin to fight. Uh, keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, keep uh, your eyes on the prize. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's a, that's a song of determination. And you see in the movement, in the Southern movement, there were songs for every occasion. That's one of the things that drew me back down South after my mother had pushed me North from Richmond, Virginia. That song calls for grit, determination, and all four of our speakers today have certainly evidenced that. And I think we ought to give them another round of applause. I was, asked, I was asked by my friend Clem Price to give remarks, and that is just a summation. I'm not supposed to preach, re-preach the sermon. <laughs> the sermon has already been preached, Junius. Remember that. He's, he's nodding. 
So I'm going to call on my lawyer skills and see if we can do a summation. <laughs> a summation to the jury. We listen to, for example, my friend Bob Moses, and he talked about stumbling upon a line of demarcation upon which he would go no further. Well, that was what the Southern movement was all about, individual acts of resistance, and pretty soon they were joined by other voices until there was a whole cacophony of sound coming together to form these organizations like SNCC and SCLC. And some of us in the North were trying to maintain what we saw as a line, race-based and class-based. But at some point, the two merged, and some of us, like myself, had to go back down south to get on the front line. The south was a final destination for some people, but it was a training ground for those of us who were coming back up to the north to learn and to grow, and to learn and to grow. And for that, on behalf of those who joined and came up to the north, I want to thank Bob Moses and Diane Nash for providing the shoulders upon which we stand. This is talk, we're talking about organizing. Well, Barbara Ramsey talked about quilting a movement, community organization, past and present, and she used the figure of Ella Baker. I never met Ella Baker, I wish I had. But she was a consummate organizer. She was a consummate organizer. And, and some of the things that were said, Ella Baker was a connector. She brought together the young and the old. She brought together North and South. She went beyond the Christian community. She was, she was onto all kinds of issues. And that's what an organizer has to do. Has, somebody has to be a connector. But sometimes, and this is drawing from my own experience, people think organizing is mobilizing. Charles Payne. Organizing is not mobilizing. You can't just call a meeting, and then the next thing you know, you're going to have the demonstration. Organizing is understanding you must cement those relationships with people. And you cement those relationships by everybody sharing some risk. And no matter what happens to you, you get up and you keep going back and forth, back and forth. And that is the tradition that we celebrate. And that's what our four speakers were talking about today. Barbara Ransby talked about widening the lens. Well, right here in this room, we got people who are involved in education, people who are involved in housing, people who are involved in environment, people who are involved in immigration. We all doing the same work because it's not that many people doing it. The misconception was that there were all kinds of folks doing all kinds of things at the same time. It wasn't like that. That's why we need to widen the lens and bring more people like those of us here today and keep them involved. And the other thing she talked about was how strategic and savvy Ella Baker was. And I interpret that to mean that we cannot be just one-trick ponies. You can't just keep going to the Board of Education, y'all. <laughs> you got to do something else. Go to the Board of Ed, but have another strategy. Be able to bend, be able to take what the opposition gives you and turn it around and do something else. That was the strength of the organizers and the tradition from which our people come today and about which our scholars write so well. Diane Nash talked about, and this was a wonderful quote, I'm a lucky woman. I was in the right place in the right time I practiced nonviolence until I got it right, until I could do it on my own. Wow. That says two things. People have to be willing to study and practice. You can't just run out there and do this thing. And then she outlined it. She says, first, you got to investigate. You have to have an agreement on objectives. You have to have education amongst your followers and bringing in more people all the time into what you're trying to do. Then you do your demonstration. Then you do your resistance. And the best thing she said 
Wow, I'm going to have to use this, Diane. I'm going to have to use this. She said, oppression always requires the cooperation of the oppressed. If the oppressed withdrew their participation from an oppressive system, the oppressive system falls. Did you hear that, Ms. Holder? Did you hear that, Achille? If we just step back and withdraw our support from this thing, then it's going to fall. I think we have to remember the words that were given to us today. Finally, Charles Payne talked about the transformation of people, development of leadership, another kind of leadership, not the kind of leadership that we, settle, that we, that we, that we celebrate once a year with Martin Luther King where he has been transformed into this, this king of peace and love, but where we celebrate the transformation of people into becoming their own leaders. And that's the kind of leadership development we need to have so that when we get Paul and Silas bound in jail, got no money for the go that bail, we'll know that there's going to be somebody to raise the money. We know that there's going to be some lawyer to get them out. We know there's going to be somebody to hand out the flyer to let folks know that Paul and Silas are in the jail. We know, we know because we are organized. Let's go out and get organized. Thank you. Thank you, Clem Price. Thank you, committee. We love you for letting us do this every year.